Hey there, Breakfast Clubbers. I am Crayley, one half of Phoenix Sisters Cosplay. This is Back Issue Breakfast Club, part of the Back of the Cereal Box Network. And this week we are reviewing Pearl. All right, good morning, everyone. We are drinking coffee in my basement and talking about the trade paperback Pearl Volume 1 this week. It is by Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Gatos. Gatos. I hope I'm saying that right. If you actually see this, I'm sorry. Comment. Tell me how to how to pronounce your name. Artists, writers, etc. All right. I have to start with a disclaimer right away. This book is not for children. It has violence. It has foul language. It has other adult content. But if you are a mature adult or an immature adult like me, uh, you will probably really enjoy this story. I'm not going to lie. I picked it up just because I thought the cover art was so pretty. Um, but I'm glad I did because the story made it totally worth it. So Pearl Tanaka is um, unable to do anything other than stand out because she is um, an albino Japanese American girl who lives in Yakuza territory. So even though what she really wants in life is to focus on her art and just do her tattoo artistry out of her mother's shop that she inherited while paying an occasional Yakuza payoff in protection or whatever to keep them out of her shop's business. One day she saves the wrong guy's life and stuff just goes totally sideways from there, completely and totally sideways. So now she's caught up in a romance, an awkward romance, blackmail, uh, violence, and even potentially a war. How is she gonna get out of it? Oh, and there's family secrets too. Romance, violence, blackmail, war, family drama. Okay, and all in the meanwhile, there's this convoluted unfolding that's really, um, really artful for every detail in this plot of these like inner Yakuza mobster workings and a new relationship forming, an old friendship being tested, and even details like she has a really unique tattoo. And even with all of this other stuff going on, like who's going to get murdered. I'm on the edge of my seat just waiting to find out all the backstory of this really unique tattoo. Like, it's an action-packed volume. Art-wise, it's just as beautiful as the cover. So the artists for this novel used limited color palettes, and they change a lot as it goes through. It's not always the same color palette, but it's always limited and fits the mood of each scene that's going on. It's really very beautiful. This was pretty to look at even if like mob violence isn't normally your normally your bag. Uh, it's just really beautiful. I mean I'm a sucker for a limited color palette being used in storytelling or set the mood anyway, if you know me. Thematically, uh, secrets, lies, emotions, intimidation, grief. There's so much to touch on thematically. Like this is an emotional ride where you have a character who other people are always talking about her emotions affect her as if she doesn't know. So a Yakuza boss is like, oh, you're so cool. You're so chill with this. Is she? She might not be, but they think they know. Her best friend has this way that she's convinced that she knows what is and isn't a cry for help. And even with all the best information and intentions of a best friend, it may still not be quite the right reason. And people are just projecting their emotions onto her all the time, which is kind of a funny theme for a story that has so many tattoo artists as characters because you're putting your art on someone else's skin. It's supposed to be what they want, but a bit of the artist is still in it. And then in these relationships, you've got people projecting ideas of the emotions and intentions of this character onto her. And it's supposed to be about her, but they can't separate themselves and their own assumptions from the ways they're trying to interact with the protagonist. It's really, really neat. Um, so if you're looking for something outside of the big DC and Marvel characters, especially if you're just looking for something new and different to try, the authors in an interview in the back said they wanted to tell a Yakuza mob story. 
without the cheesy stereotypes, especially from a lot of the 80s movies that had the Yakuza in them. And they're pretty confident that they pulled it off. And I'm pretty confident that they pulled it off. So if you're looking for something different this week, go pick up Pearl Volume 1. This is Back Issue Breakfast Club. We're part of Back of the Cereal Box Network. If you liked this review, if you find any of our reviews helpful, please, please, please go ahead and support us by going to buymeacoffee.com slash cerealboxpod. And if you hate our reviews and you think our content sucks, go to buymeacoffee.com slash cerealboxpod and contribute super generously. We'll get better. I promise. We're getting better all the time anyway, whether haters say so or not, but definitely go ahead and support us. That's how we make the content that we make. We love you all. Have a great morning.